So, what did the cell say to his sister's cell when she stepped on his toe? My toe, sis! And that's the topic of our lab for this week. So let's begin by reviewing some information. So what we have here is one single unduplicated chromosome. Now I've pointed out to you that this part here is called the centromere, and that's where the cytoskeleton will attach um, when, it's, when it's moving the chromosomes around in cell division. If this is a single unduplicated chromosome, then when a chromosome gets duplicated, it looks like the X that we recognize, that we typically think of as a chromosome. So these are both chromosomes, unduplicated, duplicated. If we draw a line right down the middle of this duplicated chromosome, this arm of the chromosome is this arm, okay? This is the arm we started with. This arm here is an exact copy of this. Therefore, we call each arm of this duplicated chromosome a sister chromatid. So this area here is one sister, and this is the other sister. They are exactly identical because this sister is a copy of this. When does this happen in the cell? Well, this is what happens in S phase, and that is part of interphase in the cell cycle. So if you remember, the cell cycle is mostly made up of interphase. Interphase and, and, um, includes a growth phase, G1. It includes S phase or synthesis phase. And that's what we're talking about here when the DNA gets duplicated. And then there's a G2 or a second growth phase. And finally, the small piece of that pie then is mitosis or cell division. So we now have our duplicated chromosomes. This gets duplicated, remember, in interphase. This is before cell division ever begins. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the pop beads. So if you imagine that the pop beads represent the chromosomes, so this would be one single unduplicated chromosome. The white bead is the centromere, and each of the colored beads represents genes on that chromosome. So that would be one unduplicated chromosome. As it goes through S or synthesis phase and the DNA, which is what makes up a chromosome, gets duplicated, now we have our duplicated chromosome. Okay, so each arm, this arm is one sister, this arm is another sister. These are identical, okay? Unduplicated, duplicated. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is, in a cell, um, we have chromosomes sometimes in diploid organisms that we call homologous pairs. So a homologous pair is as if you had chromosomes from two different parents. So let's say that these are both chromosome 1. They don't have the same identical forms of genes on them, but they have the same genes in the same location. So we'll say this first bead, maybe that represents eye color. Okay? This might have a gene for blue eyes, whereas the, or an allele for blue eyes, or this has an allele for brown eyes, but they both have the gene for eye color there. So this would be what we would call a homologous pair, okay? meaning you have one from each parent for that particular chromosome. Now what I've, what I've shown you here is an unduplicated homologous pair. But chromosomes can also exist as duplicated homologous pairs. So I'm going to recreate what we had up here, our duplicated chromosomes. But now we have a duplicated for each. So this is still a homologous pair. It's just now they're a duplicated homologous pair rather than being single unduplicated homologous pairs. All right, at this point, we're going to go back a page and talk about your pop bead activity. So I want to start with interphase, and I want to make sure that I mention to you interphase is not mitosis. Interphase is before mitosis, right? That's when the cell is just being a cell, a blood cell, or a muscle cell, or a bone cell, or a skin cell. So 
let's say that we have four chromosomes in this cell, okay? A human cell would have 23 pair, or 46 chromosomes, so our diploid number is 46, meaning if there's two copies of every chromosome in our cells, then, then we have 46 chromosomes, and that's a human cell. So to, just for simple, just to make it simple, we're gonna keep it to two pair. So we have one longer pair of chromosomes and one shorter pair. But there, it's a diploid cell because we have two of each chromosome. Okay, there are different colors so that you can identify that one was inherited from mom and one was inherited from dad. So in interphase, when the cell is just doing its job as a muscle cell or a bone cell, there's, they are unduplicated, right? There's not a, an extra copy of that chromosome, and that's what you see here. But in, as we move through interphase, so that would be like G1, as we move through, we get to S phase. S stands for synthesis, right, which means synthesis of the DNA. So it is in interphase, let me put this here, specifically it is S phase of interphase that the DNA gets duplicated or copied. Duplicated just means copied. So let me remind you before we copy the DNA, we're starting out with four chromosomes. Okay. Now S phase says DNA gets duplicated, so I'm going to come around and I'm going to duplicate all of these chromosomes. So now there are two sister chromatids together, okay? And each of these sisters is an identical copy of the other sister. So after S phase, we have duplicated chromosomes. We have a copy of each chromosome. They're still attached at the centromere. I want to point one other thing out to you though because I don't want to misrepresent this. If you were to look at what the DNA looks like when it's in interphase, it would actually be chromatin. So in the nucleus, it would just look like this, okay? We wouldn't see these nice, pretty chromosomes while it's in interphase. But for our pop beads, I wanted to at least show you what we're starting with, okay? So imagine, all the DNA is there, it's all duplicated, it's just not condensed into this nice pretty chromosome form. It would look more like this in the nucleus. So we actually enter mitosis, the first phase of mitosis is prophase, okay? And you can remember the phases of mitosis with PMAT, P-M-A-T, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. So as we move into prophase, what do we need to know about prophase? Well, we need to know that the chromosomes condense, okay? So remember, the DNA actually looks like this. But when we get to prophase, the DNA is going to look like the chromosomes, okay? It's condensing into these chromosomes. So here we are. There's not a particular order, right, to the way the chromosomes are in prophase. Um, what else should we look for? Well. We get this really neat thing happening, okay? So the spindle apparatus is going to form. And so we start to see the building out of, this, of these spindle fibers that are gonna be what's controlling the chromosome movement in the cell. So at prophase, we see those two things happening. We also see that the nuclear envelope disappears. So our next phase, I'm going to draw a little larger, is metaphase. So remember, start with the M, remember middle. Okay, so in this case, the chromosomes are going to line up at the equator or the middle. Okay. So we have our duplicated chromosomes, and they're going to line up in the middle of the cell. So remember that the spindle fibers, spindle apparatus, this is what is manipulating. They are attached at the centromere. And so that is what has aligned the chromosomes 
in the e equator or in the middle of the cell. And so the next phase then is anaphase. And in this, what is important to know is the sister chromatids are going to separate to opposite poles of the cell. So I'm going to draw a cell here to represent anaphase. Okay. We still have our spindle fibers that are attached and moving the chromosomes, but now our duplicated chromosome is separating and the two sisters are going to be traveling to opposite poles. So we no longer have our duplicated chromosome together. So when it's together, it's a duplicated chromosome. When it's together, each arm is called a sister chromatid. Once you separate them, now they are each chromosomes in their own right. So the sister chromatids become separated and now they are traveling okay, to opposite ends of the cell. Same thing with this one, and this, and this. Now, telophase is the final phase, and so we need to turn our page one last time. Telophase or telophase, and what we will have as the cell elongates we will still have the spindle fibers and in this case the, chromos the, the chromosomes actually arrive at the opposite poles of the cell. So remember anaphase separated them and now they have arrived at the opposite poles. This is telophase. Chromosomes have arrived. The final step then is something called cytokinesis. And cytokinesis is essentially the separation of the cytoplasm. So that's everything else. We've been tracking the chromosomes or the DNA, but cytokinesis takes care of everything else. So if it's an animal cell, like the whitefish blastula that you looked at, then you get you see that you basically get this pinching in, right, which is called a cleavage furrow, and those separate into two separate cells. If it's a plant cell, though, like the onion root, a cell wall can't pinch in. So actually, you have a, a buildup, right, of a new cell wall that comes in, and it, it builds a new cell. Where we, once either the, the animal cell pinches in and you have two separate cells or the plant cell builds up the cell wall, either way, now we have two daughter cells. Okay, there's one daughter cell and here's our, our next. They are both genetically identical to one another and they're genetically identical to the starting parent cell, the, the cell we started with. Now one thing I want to point out to you, if you'll recall, we started with four chromosomes in the parent cell. We've ended up with four chromosomes in each of the daughter cells. So we have the same chromosome number as what we started with. Um, it's just because everything was duplicated during S phase, and then we separated the duplicated chrom sister chromatids into two separate cells. Now one of your assignments is to think about what might happen when, when errors occur and these don't separate as they should. So for example, if we have one pair of chromosomes that as they're lined up in the middle, when they begin to separate and they should separate to opposite ends of the pole, instead both sisters travel to the same cell. If that were to happen, that would definitely be an error and one of the daughter cells would have three chromosomes, whereas the other daughter cell would have five. And so you are to look up um, some karyotypes, which are essentially a picture of a cell, all of a cell's chromosomes. 
And so you're to look up and find what kind of abnormalities you can see in some of these chromosomes from cancer cells.